Hi, recently one of my viewers sent me a very interesting link here on YouTube about hiding lines in Commodore BASIC. Now I already did similar video on this topic in the past, but this is a little bit different, so let me show you what I mean. Let me write a very small BASIC program, just three lines of code. Let's go. Ten print line one. Twenty print line two and 30 print line 3 of course now let's run it as expected line 1 line 2 and line 3 let's list it it's all there now it's time for a little bit of magic now let's try to list this program one more time oops as you can see we are missing the line number 20 but watch this if we run it again the program works just fine. All three lines of code get executed. Come on. Let's list it one more time. But yeah, still missing the line number 20 here. Very, very weird. However, there was no explanation in that video how to do this little trick. So I decided to show you how you can make your lines of code disappear in Commodore BASIC. But to do that, we need to know a little bit more about how BASIC code is actually stored in memory of Commodore 64. So let's start with that. Okay, let's see how our basic code uh, is actually stored in memory of Commodore 64. So, for example, here we have these two lines of code. Now, by default, uh, basic code gets stored starting at the address 0801 hexadecimal or 801. So, from that position and moving forward, each line of the code gets stored. And if we take a memory dump from that position we can see that we have those two lines of code stored here representing by these hexadecimal values here and uh, so okay that's fine but to understand what what each this of these values actually mean or represent we need to actually know how the structure of these um, lines looks like right so as you can see on this image here, each of these blocks represents a single line of basic code. Uh, and as you can see, there are several sections in that, in that package. Okay, so let's begin with this link. This link, or better say pointer, is represented by two bytes. And it actually represents the memory position where the next line of basic code starts. So the value that is written in this first package is actually memory position where the second package begins. So the second line of code actually begins. Okay, so you can see that these uh, lines of code are actually by this link, by this pointer, actually chained together. Okay, the sec uh, second um, section in, in our package is actually also represented by two bytes is the line number. Those are numbers that we use in Commodore BASIC 10, 20, 30 and so on. Line numbers, right? Okay, then we have um, this third section, which is actually whatever our commands are and whatever we fit in this single line of code. And then the whole package ends up with a single zero byte that represents end of the line. And then we are going for each line of the code and then at the end of the of our code we have two zero bytes which represents end of the file there are no more lines after that okay so very nice now let's try to break these <coughs> values here in a little bit more sensible way so it can be much easier to see what do we actually have here so i broke those values into each line so each of these line represents one package so as you can see uh, our first line starts at address 0801 hexadecimal our second line of uh, code starts at address 080 hexadecimal and then uh, at address 081d we have two zero bytes which represents actually end of the file okay now let's break this one line of code one package to see what these values actually represent here 
so I did something like this so I think this will be understandable right so different colors represent different section of this package first two bytes is actually that link that pointer two bytes so that means that is, this is a 16-bit value uh, and it's written in a little Indian style that means that the le le least significant byte comes first and then most significant bytes comes second that means that we need to read this um, as 080F not other way around so we just swap places so what this telling us well it's telling us that our next command next line of code starts at address 080F and that is exactly this memory memory address here where our second line is starting and if we take a look first two bytes of our second line uh, which is um, value is 081D this is exactly this memory position here which is actually end of the file so all chained together real nicely okay the next section also represented as two bytes or 16-bit value and also in little Indian style so we read this as a hexadecimal and this this is actually the line number and this is number 10 in decimal system so <coughs> our line 10 also if you take a look this section for our second line it's 14 hexadecimal and that means 20 in decimal system okay the next byte is our print token so each command in commodore basic get actually stored as a token as a number so they are not written in the memory as a string but they are tokenized so that is the way how to save space and gain some speed during the execution so the, this yellow section here this n bytes um, is actually that string part of, of our command these values represent this section here including the space between the command and the string itself and we are ending uh, our line with of course um, zero byte and that represents end of the line and then that's it that's really it okay now knowing this how can we perform the little trick that i showed you earlier well you see when basic code get executed it actually needs to follow the line numbers the line numbers are very very important in commodore basic but the list routine is a little bit different it doesn't use the line numbers it actually uses these pointers this link so obviously there is room to mess around with these numbers so how to perform that trick that i showed you earlier well let's see i changed this value here this pointer at the first line of code and instead before it pointed at 080f now I change it to 081D. Uh, now 081D, as you can see here, is end of the file. So what will happen is if we execute this program, it will be just fine because I didn't change the line numbers. The line numbers are still 10 and 20 and both of these lines will be executed normally. But when you execute the list command, the line 20 would, would not be visible it will not print at all only the line number 10 so that's the whole deal and now we can mess around with it play around with it and have a little bit of fun <laughs> okay so to perform this little trick uh, all you need is some kind of monitor or um, memory editor or whatever you want to call it i will use the super monitor but you can use whatever you prefer so let's load that. Okay, now let me get out of this monitor and let me switch to white to be more visible here. And let's start our new program. Now, 10 print line 1, 20 print line 2 and 30 print line 3 of course now let's run it yep and list it it's all there now 
uh, we need to go back to this monitor and let's call it um, 169 here we are now what we are interesting in is at memory address 801 so as you can see here on this right side we are seeing those string parts of our <coughs> lines of code and what we will change is this first two bytes which is actually pointer from the first line to the second line and we, we will change it from <coughs> 810 to 81f so to do that we will write at memory position 801 and we will write 1f and 08 that's all now we can exit the monitor and let's try to list the program one more time okay here we go as you can see we are missing the line number 20. if we run it it's all there working just fine now here's the problem let's try to save this file let's call it a test tool and add disk okay and the program is saved now let's clear the memory nothing here fine let's load our test tool file back from the disk it's loaded let's list it as you can see all three lines are visible again let's run it yeah working just fine now what's what's happening here well you see <clears throat> when we save the program it actually saved the pointers as well that's fine and every change that we made is saved on the disk the problem is once the program is loaded again in the memory re relocating the pointer is done automatically and this is done um, because um, basic program can be loaded at different memory positions it doesn't have to be at 801 so every time you load the program all pointers are reallocated so that means that this little hack that we did is just automatically get fixed now there is a way to avoid this um, and that is by using um, preloaders so instead of loading our program with the load command we can use um, some other program that actually reads the file from the disk and simply inject it in the memory of Commodore 64 at a certain position so I wrote a little program in assembly language um, it's very simple uh, little program uh, the file load 2 I believe it was let's load that file load 2 doesn't exist let's see what do we have on this disk ah the prg okay okay load file load 2 dot prg uh, one okay it's loaded so let's okay let's clear the memory okay now we are ready to call a little preloader so here we are now uh, this preloader actually loaded this file demo2.prg from the disk and injected directly into memory so let's try to list um, pro our program as you can see here it is and we are still missing the line number 20 if, but if we run it it's all there okay um, here are some additional troubles or problems with this little hack so let's say that we have again then print line 1 20 print line 2 and 30 go to 20 okay let's try to run this as you can see we have go to command that points at line number 20 now watch what, what will happen if i do the same thing again and change the pointer from the line 1 um, to go to line 30 so to skip line 20 so let's call uh, 
uh, monitor again. Okay, we are interesting at this 801. And again, we are changing the position of 801 to 1F08. Okay, let's list it. So we are missing the line number 20 again, but watch what will happen now when i run this program so you see <clears throat> there is a problem we did this little hack but we also use this go to command to point at line 20 and suddenly our program is broken so this little hack doesn't work with the go to and go sub commands because they actually use these pointers to quickly jump at certain <coughs> line so yeah that's uh, one way to uh, mess it up um, however we could say that ram1 okay let's list it okay now we have rebuilt by adding additional line we rebuild the pointers again and let's say that we want to change this to line 30 so let's list it and let's run it line to line oh sorry uh, to line 10 sorry yeah i'm doing nonsense okay so line one line two and so on okay so now this is our program let's try to do this one more time so let's go back to a system monitor <coughs> Okay, can memory address 801. Okay, we are still at um, 81F. So, at one, we are writing 1F08. Okay, all done. Let's list it. Again, missing the line number 20, but this time go to command doesn't go to line 20, it goes to line 10. Let's run this program. As you can see, now it's working just fine so essentially you can hack this but if this line that is skipped um, is somewhere used to jump to it or by this go to command or go sub command then you're actually fucked if we just rebuild this line and try to list this program you will see that all lines are back again so this is it. This is uh, everything that I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed playing around with these line pointers and this little hack. And until next time, goodbye.